A river full of boiling water, miles of century-old crop circles, and a place that receives half a million lightning strikes a year. All this and more in five scientifically impossible places that really exist. Brilliant news! Number 1. Fairy Circles in Namibia, an extremely strange thing occurs for which scientists, although they may have many different hypotheses, don't really know how it happens. Over thousands of square kilometers of arid grasslands, strange barren circular patches appear, varying in size but almost identical in shape. The strangest thing is that even though the grass surrounding the fairy circles changes in shape and density, the actual barren fairy circles themselves don't. In fact, some fairy circles were marked by scientists and have remained in the same position for the past 23 years. And aerial photography taken at four year intervals shows that they were in the same positions 75 years previous to that. Some scientists thought poor soil quality could be the cause of these circles, but testing has revealed that the soil of the surrounding area was identical. Other scientists thought that the surrounding plants could be starving the fairy circles of water, and therefore nothing could grow within them. But this doesn't explain why they would be circular in shape and subsequent soil humidity tests revealed that there were little or no difference between the circles and their surroundings. And other scientists thought that underground termites could be the cause. But although they were termites under some of the circles, others were termite free and termites wouldn't explain the circular shape or the fact that the fairy circles haven't moved in a hundred years. Whatever the reason, there's no denying the strange mesmerizing beauty of the area and the fact that scientists can't explain it just adds to the mystery. Number 2. The Taos Hum The town of Taos in New Mexico is one of the longest continually inhabited communities in the whole of the United States. There have been many reports of a strange hum that can be heard in the town and in 1993 residents petitioned Congress to investigate the odd hum that some residents could hear. Even though it wasn't until 1993 that the first petition for investigation of the hum was placed, the history of the noise is a lot older. Ancient law spoke of an area where nature held counsel and sung to re-establish harmony. In the mid-1800s, Giovanni Maria Agostini Giustiniani climbed the El Salto mountain in the area close to Taos and claimed to have heard the seven notes of the musical scale as nature played her tune on the mountain. And even to this day, mountain climbers still claim to hear an endless musical tone that changes in pitch as they climb upward. Four years after the petition, Congress sent a team of a dozen scientists to Taos to investigate the hum. These experts found out that approximately 2% of the population heard the hum. It was heard by both men and women in equal measure and the hearer's average age was about 40 years old. Despite having sensitive microphones and VLF antenna, the scientists could not capture the sound and therefore claimed that it must be a naturally occurring sound, perhaps made by the wind coming out of the Rio Grande Canyon or off the El Salto mountain. However, people who can hear the hum claim that it has abrupt stops and starts and sounds as if it were man-made. Whatever the hum is and However it is made, Taos is not the only place it can be heard. Other towns all across the world also have a hum. There's the Kokomo hum in Indiana, the Windsor hum in Ontario, and the Auckland hum in New Zealand, among others. Number 3. Catatumbo Storms on Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, where the Catatumbo River enters the lake, a strange phenomenon occurs. Approximately half the nights in the year, when the sun goes down, an easterly wind begins to pick up speed, bringing in humidity from the Caribbean and from the lake itself. This wind hits the surrounding mountains, which causes it to rise rapidly, creating almost continuous thunderstorms. These storms last around 10 hours, with up to 280 lightning strikes per hour, and only happen over the mouth of the river Catatumbo. That's six months of thunderstorms every night and four or five lightning strikes every minute. Although scientists understand the mechanism of this phenomenon, they still don't understand why the storm is restricted to just the mouth of the Catatumbo River. If you're enjoying this video, please give us a quick like. Number four, the Devil's Kettle. 
The Brule River flows through Judge C.R. Magny State Park in Minnesota and creates several waterfalls on its way. One of these waterfalls has puzzled scientists for decades. The Devil's Kettle Falls is intriguing because the Brule River actually separates at the top of the falls. The eastern side goes over the two-step fall, dropping 50 feet and continues downstream, but the western side falls into a hole, drops at least 10 feet and disappears underground. Thinking that the water simply rejoins the river after the falls, people have thrown any number of things into the kettle to see where they come out. Sticks, ping pong balls, big logs and even GPS trackers. But none have resurfaced. Geologists are perplexed because there are only really three solutions as to what the devil's kettle really is. One is that it's an underground cavern or tunnel, but these are only formed in soft rock types like limestone. The type of rock occurring at the falls is a much harder type called rhyolite. Another thing it could be is a fracture or fissure caused by tectonic movement. But there is also no history of tectonic movement in the area which could have caused a fissure. Another thing it could be is a lava tube formed millions of years ago. But there is no evidence of lava tubes anywhere in the state park or indeed anywhere within the entire state of Minnesota. In 2017, hydrologists decided to measure the amount of water flowing in the river both before and after the falls. The results showed the same amount of water flowing into and out of the falls. This meant that the water flowing into the Devil's Kettle rejoins the river directly after the falls. However, even though scientists know this, they still can't explain why anything that is thrown down into the kettle doesn't just reappear in the river. How the kettle avoids becoming blocked with leaves, sticks and debris, and what the Devil's Kettle actually is and when or indeed how it was formed. Number 5. The Boiling River the Chanay Timpishka in Peru is a tributary of the Amazon River, also known as La Bomba and the only boiling river in the world. This river is 4 miles long, has a maximum width of 82 feet and a maximum depth of 20 feet. Along its course, the water temperature ranges from a mild second degree burns 113 Fahrenheit to a tremendous boil your skin off 212 Fahrenheit. The baffling mystery behind it is what actually heats the the water. This isn't just a small thermal spring or a geyser, it's a vast amount of water, requiring a vast amount of energy to heat it. The obvious answer would be volcanic activity, but the nearest volcano is more than 430 miles away. Scientists believe that the river could be heated geothermically. The hypothesis is that rain falls up in the Andes. On its way down, it seeps into the ground through tiny fault lines. The deeper it sinks, the more geothermic energy it receives and the hotter it gets. Then these fault lines converge and the water emerges into the Amazon at the start of the boiling river. If this hypothesis was discovered to be true, the Shanai Timpishka would be the largest hydrothermal system on the planet. Which location surprised you the most? Comment below!